Today, we will be talking about one arm lock off strength. The ability to hold yourself in this position, basically. Now, as a climber, it's quite important that you're able to hold this position because when you go for things statically and you need to lock off to attain some additional reach, you could do it without having to go into it dynamically, which is very useful specifically for outdoor climbing. But enough of that. Let's talk prerequisites. The things you need in order to even consider trying this is basically just one thing. If you can do 10 pull-ups in a row with relatively good form, you're ready to try doing this move. <sighs> Before we start, let me tell you something about the lock-off. It's not so much about how strong you are when you first begin. It's about how hard can you contract your muscles. The lock-off is a try-hard move. Basically, try really hard and it will come a lot faster and quicker. Don't try hard and it won't come at all. So it's not about building more muscle or anything like that. It's about firing your muscles more actively. So the lock off is a very active movement where you have to squeeze your hand really hard, drive your elbows down into your asshole, make sure your elbows cram into your ribs until they break, hold your breath, at least when you first start off. Once you get better at it, you can breathe and talk a little bit. But when you first start off, it's all about trying hard. So here's the workout that you're gonna get. You may have noticed I had one Olympic gymnastic wooden ring set up because that's basically all you need to train the lock off. Now, personally, I like to start off training people by having them sit on the ground. So you sit down on the ground, just like this. My arm angle is roughly at 90 degrees, but if you want to make it easier, you lower the ring. So now your arm angle is a little bit more, well, a little bit more acute than 90 degrees because the closer your arm angle is, the easier it will be to hold the lock off position. Once it's at 90 degrees, that's arguably the hardest position to hold it in. Higher, easier, hardest, and then slightly easier right here. So we're trying to train it at the easiest position. And as you get better, slowly extend it out to 90. So now that you know what to do, here's what you do after you warm up, of course. You're gonna sit down on the ground, keep your legs straight, elevate them, right? Or just keep them flat. You wanna make sure your torso is nice and straight. A common mistake is that when people start pulling, they'll lean backwards and they'll look like this. That's not what we want. We wanna be straight and tall. And the only thing you'll worry about is applying as much force downwards as you can. All right, and you're doing this for exactly five-ish seconds. All right, take a deep breath. And then crank, 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 right? You're gonna be cranking down as hard as you can for those five seconds. Again, I cannot stress how important it is that this is a try hard move. Remember, take your elbow, jam it straight into your asshole. Literally, that's the direction you wanna go. Elbow to asshole means you're right here, your lats are nice and engaged. Your arm is close to your body. The closer your arm is to your body, the lighter whatever load you're carrying is becomes. Right, in this tight, nice, tight position, keeps your upper back nice and tight. Everything's nice and taut. Remember, pull down really hard. Again, I can't stress how important it is to try really hard for just these five seconds. Back to the form though. So you try really hard for five seconds. Ah, nothing happens. You don't get off the ground. That's completely fine. What we're trying to do here is just isometrically contract your muscles while trying to concentrically contract them, if that makes any sense at all. Now, obviously, once you've done the right hand, you wanna shake it out for maybe 30 seconds or so, let it break, switch to your left hand, try hard for five minutes, and then give yourself approximately three to five minutes resting time. <sighs> the resting time is very important. You wanna make sure your muscles recover enough to give yourself a really good all out try. Remember, try hard for five seconds, rest really long, in this case about three minutes. You could even push it to four minutes if you like. And then you're looking for anywhere between, say, three to five sets any more and i feel like you might not be trying hard enough after that and any less and i'm like well you still have a little bit more to give so give a little bit more so you're looking at three to five sets for five seconds each with about three to four minutes rest per set now say one day you're doing this workout right and you're trying really hard and you pull pull oh oh and you manage to leave the ground right you start to levitate a little bit and you start to feel like a cloud excellent here's what you do now you will take the ring and you just raise it up. Cause now you know that you have the physical strength to physically keep your body elevated. 
So now with the ring higher, uh, really high. Again, we want to start with your arm angle really close to your body because that's the easiest angle. Now with the ring really high, squeeze it and you just slowly, slowly lift your feet off the ground. Hold, 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 bam, for as long as you can. And then at this point in time, you will have gotten the, um, the one arm lock off down. Congratulations, tap on the balls. I'm so proud of you, partner. Mwah. So what next? How do you improve upon this movement or isometric? And the best way to improve upon this movement is um, be consistent about it. Obviously, I, I, I know maybe you're expecting something else, but no, the best way to get good at it is to <laughs> right? You just keep doing it, keep trying hard. And as time progresses, you get better. You go from two to seconds to three to four to five to 10, 15, 20, you know, anyways, you start getting up there. And then at that point in time, you're an absolute unit with that lock-off strength. Now, in terms of how fast you can expect to actually achieve the lock-off strength, I'm gonna let you know now, it's not something that's extremely difficult to obtain. It's not like a one-arm pull-up. Honestly, if you could do those 10 pull-ups that I spoke about earlier, you could probably realistically expect to get this after like two weeks, maybe less. Uh, me personally, I got it like after, like I got it down really good to like five seconds after two weeks and it might've took me like three workouts or four, four workouts uh, before I got it to those five seconds. Cause again, it's more of like a neuromuscular thing where you just, where it's just try hard, where you focus on, it's the skill of trying hard is what you're trying to do here. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, one of my roommate got it after like two one arm, after two workouts of doing something very similar to this. Um, and yeah, again, you can do like 10 pull-ups relatively well and you have a light body weight. It comes, it comes relatively quickly. It's more of a mind muscle type thing ordeal. And then once you get it, it's like muscle memory. And if you lose it, it does come back really quickly if you train it again. Anyways, that's it for the uh, one arm lock off. Uh, again, it's a cool skill to have. Is it applicable to climbing? Yeah, probably. I think it's more useful than pull-ups, that's for sure. And with that being said, uh, I'll see you next time, partner.